Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk number 57. You don't need your hands, George. We have the actual number. Oh my gosh. <laughs> there it is. 57 times we have done tech talk and we still got crap to talk about. It goes on and on. And of course, we would love to get your questions. Uh, you can ask them in the Facebook chat room. If you're on Clubhouse, you can ask them live on our show. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can watch it there as well. We are streaming everywhere. <laughs> everywhere you want to be. That's right. And more. So stay tuned. We got lots of cool stuff to talk about with Twisted Wave and acoustic panels and all sorts of cool stuff that has to do with your recording of your voiceover tracks. Stay tuned. It's time for Voiceover Body Shop Tech Talk right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. And it's time for Tech Talk. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO. B.S. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Even when Jeff's not here, Jeff's here. Jeff's here. He's always here. He's off doing a movie right now. So we can't. And I mean, with Aaron Sorkin, and he's telling, oh, I'm working with Nicole Kidman. And oh, it's it's great. It's awesome. So it's good to see people's careers progressing. Yeah. Working at that level. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, we're here to talk about your home voiceover studio. If you have a question for us, which by the way, is what makes George and I totally tick, uh, is your questions because we have the answers. If he doesn't know, I know if I know, don't know, he knows. And I usually ask him, do you know? And he goes, I don't know. Let's look it up or let's make something up. <laughs> yeah. Let's make something up. <laughs> yeah, that always it, works. Yeah. Sometimes we make it up as we go along, but if it works, <laughs> Tony Robbins once said, if a miracle happens near you, claim credit uh, <laughs> that's good i like that <laughs> anyway uh again if you've got a question you can put it in uh, facebook you can put it in the chat room in youtube and if you're in clubhouse you can ask your question live in our next segment but we that's got right. lots to cover george has an awful lot in his weekly tech update lots of stuff that you need to know take it away mr Whitham. maybe you don't need to know all of it but there's all stuff right. in here maybe that could help some of you well, let's okay. get to it. Let's get to it. Um, don't I have like theme music or something? Oh, there it is. Time for the tech update. Mm. Tech update. Tech update. So Twisted Wave price raised first time ever. $99. It's no longer $79. Um, that's, I don't know if that's a big deal or not, but I'll tell you, that means if he's kept $79, the price for Twisted Wave for how long have you had it? I, 10, 12 years? You know, it's basically just gotten cheaper every year if you add inflation. So really, he's just correcting for inflation. So I think he certainly deserves it. And I think it's a, still a brilliant buy at $99. I know on 
the Twisted Wave group on Facebook. That was the overwhelming, you know, feedback. Not a, I didn't see anybody dare say, oh, why did he raise the price? No, everybody feels it's well. They've all been using it. They already paid their seventy. Well, bucks. that's so what do they care? Everybody I'm... there got in at seventy nine <laughs> bucks. So right, exactly. <laughs> Good point. Uh, they're biased, but uh, anyway, yeah. So that, that's a little bit of a price jump, but uh, still feel it that it's a highly, highly valuable tool for the voice actor, and even for the studio producer. Like if you use Pro Tools, and there's certain things that are just very clunky to do in Pro Tools. They just isn't like batch processing. It just doesn't have a good way of doing that. And Twisted Wave makes that stuff super easy. So we don't get nothing for plugging them, just knowing that we're all going to use the easiest to use software for voiceover. So we love Twisted Wave. Speaking of which, there's a, a beta version that was just released. You can now opt in to be in the beta program on the app. And so you can ask to be sent beta updates. Now, as a voice actor working in your studio every day, I don't recommend that, <laughs> but if you're, uh, if you have more than one computer and you like testing new things, um, you can try that. And there's a new version 25.8.5. So if you have that extra point on the end, that's the beta. And, um, it's a, there's a speech recognition function being tested out now. So we'll have to figure out how we want to make use of that, but it could be helpful for automated proofing of an audiobook, perhaps, cause you'll be able to check your work as you go. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see the use cases for this, but uh, it's in there. Um, so it'll be something to play with. I have something new sent to me all the way from España. Ooh, show and tell from show across the world. <laughs> I know. Fan mail from around the world. world. Um, I have a couple things from Studio Bricks. Let me see. Three sizable objects, which I'm trying to gracefully. <laughs> I should just stand. The chair is making it harder. Um, Studio Bricks, uh, we've talked about them on the show. They've, they've got a really, really nicely designed uh, isolation booth. But acoustically, it's always had a little, it had, it's had its issues. Okay. Not, doesn't, didn't nail it on the acoustics for everybody. Um, and they've been using other companies' products. Well, Guillermo, uh, he and I had a little powwow. We had a little meeting. He wanted to show me some new stuff. And then he was kind enough to send it to me from Spain so we could actually check it out in person. So I have all that stuff on my lap. So the most interesting thing is, well, okay. So there's two, two different acoustical panels. They, they decided to produce their own in-house foam acoustical panel for, I guess, for more of a budget studio. Um, and... It's, it looks like this. It looks like your kind of your typical two by four. Oh, I'm sorry, f uh, two by two foot square panel. Um, it is roughly two inches thick. But what makes it interesting is like is the way it's split up between a thinner back layer and a thicker front layer. So I like that. I like that it has that variety of surfaces. But overall, overwhelmingly. It's mostly just two inches thick. And a lot of the panels out there, they're wedges or they have little um, pyramids. And what happens with those wedged and pyramid foams is you lose a lot of the effectiveness of the absorption because there's a lot of areas where the panel is less than an inch thick as it goes into the little valleys between the peaks. And the panel like this, you're going to get a lot more effectiveness over the control of the sound. But this isn't the exciting thing for me so much. It's really more this one. Um, this one is a new panel that they're making in-house um, that is made of some recycled materials. It's not all recycled, but the main material it's made out of is something called PET, which I believe uh, is recycled plastic from, I think, like milk jugs. Is that right, Dan? Have you heard of PET plastic before? Yeah, that's what that's it's recycled. It's yeah. saving the planet and diffusing yeah. sound in the same process. Yeah, exactly. So this panel is made out of a blend a blend of material. A lot of it's recycled. And um as you can see, it's got a really cool, interesting look to it. Um it's it the way it's designed, you can kind of bend it around corners. So if you want to make it a corner trap, it can be set up that way. Um it has a nice easy to attach backing on it. It's not like 
it's almost hard plastic, so you can pretty easily attach adhesives or Velcro to this. But to me, the most important thing is it has no odor. It has hmm. no chemical odor, odor of any kind. It really is odor-free. And for a lot of folks, that's a pretty darn big deal. Um, you know, a lot of us are very sensitive to, to smells and, and, and uh, volatile compounds, VOCs. Um, we don't want stuff in a booth that we're going to breathe that has volatile organic compounds. Low VOC we want, or no VOC. And this is a no VOC product. So they're going to be offering this in their booth at some point, but also you'll be able to buy these um, just as panels that you can use. So I only have one, so it's kind of hard to test it in context of a studio, but um, it works. <laughs> like this, that's all that matters. Are good. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> weigh that much. It's certainly heavier than a piece of foam of the equivalent area because it's a more dense material, but that's also why it works so well, I think. And then also he sent along with it a diffusion, uh, two of these actually, I have two of them, they're little diffusion panels. So what they let you do is experiment with your acoustic treatment. And you can place these into the panel. And it's got, little, it's got a little mounting bracket on the rear that just interfaces with the panel. And so you can put these up in your booth and add a little bit of liveliness to the booth as you wish. Yeah, I was going to so say, that's, that's a good way to, because every room is different, every voice is different. So if you can experiment with that, it makes a lot of sense. I think it's really neat. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing how it works out in the real world. There's, I have heard people doing games and certain things where the, where the director is like, you sound too present. You know, you sound too close to the mic. You sound too on mic or whatever, which is obviously the opposite of normally what you want. But for characters and games and things, they're trying to get these different sounds. And so to be able to throw those diffusers up um, and, and sort of liven up the room a little bit, it's something that they may really appreciate. So who knows? Someday you might be, let me change the booth sound and putting these little panels on the walls. Who knows? Yeah. Um, moving along quickly. Um, if you're using the newer M1 Max, as Dan and I are now using for the show, um, be aware that if you are someone that uses third-party uh, sound uh, processing plugins that aren't already inside um, the Apple, like the Twisted Wave um, audio units or yeah, what comes yeah. inside Adobe Audition, you're still going to have to run your softwares like Twisted Wave and Audition in Rosetta mode. So that's a compatibility mode that will run the software as, as though it was Intel software. And then it, it emulates Intel using something called Rosetta. And it's totally seamless once you've switched the mode over. And then the Mac is translating. And um, that allows those plugins. And there's still pretty much all of them are falling behind a little bit in developing their M1 plugins but allows them to function. So um, if you are like on the edge of buying an M1 Mac or you've already bought a new M1 Silicon Mac or the new ones that are coming out, like the new iMacs and the new next MacBook Air coming out soon, um, just be aware of that. You may not have an out of the box, everything just works experience because some plugins are just not gonna work on Silicon, or the new Silicon Macs yet. So just be, be aware of that. Don't buy that as your only computer. Buy it as an upgrade to one you have and take your time transitioning over to it until you've tested everything, which is exactly what Dan and I did. We kept our other Mac minis around until we were feeling confident in the new system. Yep. Um, moving on, there's a new microphone in town, a new USB microphone. Um, and we were just talking about USB mics last week about the hype mic and that, you know, right. USB mics are maturing and cl clearly sound quality is really not a problem anymore with USB mics. And, but this company called Antelope Audio, which I have mixed feelings about because they have a pretty small U.S. distribution, meaning that if things go wrong, it's harder to get parts and support. But I'll tell you, they are innovating. And they have this one called the, uh, I can throw that up on screen, actually, show you guys. Sue's got it. Thanks, Sue. There it is. Um, it's called the uh, Antelope Audio Axino Synergy Core. That rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? It's a USB mic. Why can't it's they just call it? It's a USB mic, but they don't want to call it that because they don't want to down, you know, I think USB has a little bit of, you know, it has a little stigma attached. Yeah. Um, so anyway, it, it's, a, it's a fully featured large diaphragm condenser you, uh, microphone. It looks and feels like a normal studio mic, but on the bottom of the mic, it has a USB port. Um, and what's nice about it is it has a proper microphone gain knob on the front. 
and it has a proper headphone level knob on the front so it, you can quickly adjust levels as needed. Um, it's got a high pass filter, it's got a pad, things you expect to find on a studio mic. But then it's got a lot of magic inside the box. And that magic is all it, of these microphones. It can emulate other mics? <laughs> yes. So, um, and I, I can't I can't say I've tested this mic against all these mics. I can't say I've A-B'd against all these vintage mics because I'm sure as heck I don't have them. Um, but the, the technology of this mic emulation has definitely matured. It's getting to the point where it really, really does work. And the, the names of the mics are clever. They cannot say Neumann. <laughs> they cannot say AKG. So what they do is they say the name of the city where the mic's from and then the model number. So there's the, uh, for example, the Berlin 50, uh, the Berlin 67, Ooh. the Berlin 87, <laughs> <laughs> stuff like that. There's the Illinois 7B. What do you think that one is? Hmm. The Shure SM7B. Yeah. Um, so anyway, all these mics are built into the mic, um, which is pretty, pretty wild. So um, not only that, there's also a full-blown monitor mixer inside with loop back. Um, there's sound processing, which, you know, for some of you, this is a gold, gold, and for many of you, it's totally unnecessary. But it has a whole suite of plugins, like uh, EQs and <laughs> compressors. All of this is built into the mic, and then you wow. use their little console. So, you know, developing news here, I, this is a mic that seems to me, as a, as a techie person who loves to have elegant solutions without a lot of extra gear this seems like a really fun thing to experiment with and certainly could be a killer webcasting tool you know yeah webcasting, probably podcasting. yeah i mean again all this stuff is made for making music uh you music know and it, now it, crossing into podcasting I'd and, say. and i was and then the next point yeah. was is they're now making all this stuff for podcasting voiceover right. They don't talk about this in the boardrooms. We need to make a no, voiceover mic. It doesn't doesn't happen. They We're really, just they really borrowing don't. this technology. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's fascinating, and I'm looking forward to getting one when there's avail when there's an available mic. A Westlake Pro is a dealer for them. They don't. It's on their site. But they don't have any. They don't have one. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the issue with these uh, smaller companies. Um, I moving on quickly. RME Total Mix. If you know what that is, and you've always been confounded about the Total Mix mixing interface. I did a video with Jerry Pelletier, a friend of ours who loves the, his RME uh, audio interface and how, and he demonstrates how he uses Total Mix. Um, it's on YouTube. It's on my George the Tech YouTube channel. Um, Sue might be able to even throw the link on the screen at that. That will help you because who wants to type 12 random characters, but there, <laughs> there it is. It is. <laughs> uh, it's, it's YouTube youtube.com slash f capital f lowercase w c c c x z uppercase c s o lowercase c there you go for you those who are listening i'll never forget that <laughs> i gotta remember we got clubhouse <laughs> listeners we got podcast listeners and lastly headphone bleed um i had a client just recently who was saying everything i record has this little weird echo in it and i don't know what's going on and um and we did a session together and i listened and i realized it was headphone bleed meaning that she had her headphones up so loud that the the sound of the headphone was bleeding or being picked up by her microphone and it was creating this mysterious reverb or echo and um we figured i figured out what it was during the session which got we got it sorted but it comes to a couple of points and we've hammered these a couple of times <laughs> over 100 times probably one of them is uh, how to avoid headphone bleed. Number one, don't wear headphones. <laughs> well, there's, there's that, yeah. <laughs> don't wear headphones when you're voice acting, if you can, avoid it. Number two is turn down the monitoring level in your headphones. So if you're doing a directed read um, and your interface allows you to control the monitoring blend, like there's a knob that lets you say more input versus more playback or USB, whatever it is, uh, turn yourself down and turn it more towards them. And number three is just simply turn them down. Just turn down the headphone level. Um, but uh, um, there's also, of course, headphones that have better seals. Like sh my client in this in this case was using the Sony's, and 
they don't have a very tight seal. So that's another reason they were feeding back. Um, but I'm telling you, if your headphones are loud enough to feed back with a mic, they could be damaging your ears too. What? So, yeah. <laughs> so be careful. <laughs> I've been wearing headphones, headphones all these so years. So damn loud. Yeah, exactly. Whoa. So <laughs> let's talk more about acoustics and foam and stuff. What did you have to have in mind, Dan? Well, you know, there was a, there was a posting on Facebook this morning. Not that I go in there, you know, I just read it for the articles. Oh, um, yeah. And someone was asking, how do you attach foam to the wall? And there were like 40 comments on this thing. And <laughs> there was. Because it's not that straightforward, actually. Yeah, well, it, but it can be. Once you know if, how it is, once, it's easy well, when course. you know how. Exactly. Uh, a lot of people mentioned 3M commander strips, which are, you know, two, it's two sided tape with Velcro, which is, which is great. Um, it's expensive. It's expensive. And it by the way, expensive. it doesn't stick to foam. Uh, which is what I was going to come up with here. I have a hack for uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. There are people who love the spray on glue, which if you're renting an apartment, don't do. <laughs> don't do that in a rental. Oh my God. <laughs> no, never do that. Never do that. So there goes your deposit right there. It's going to destroy the closet wall. Um, and you know, people say T pins. That was, that was a good one. You know, yeah. great. If you're making model airplanes too. Um, <laughs> Yeah, now there's there's one I think that people won't get unless you're a little older and you know how to make balsa wood airplanes. They're also used for dissecting frogs and stuff. Yes, like you gotta gotta hold the, the gut out. And, you know, <laughs> gotta remember that from high school. Yeah, that's what I think of. Deep in, get put it, you get them yeah. in a wax tray and slice them open and yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of ways. You know, but here's here's what I do, and and actually, uh. Mr. Smith over at Oralex actually loved this one. Alex is the name. <laughs> Eric Smith. Eric, Eric. Eric. Yeah. Yeah. Eric Smith. He actually wrote back because I did a video on this many years ago and he wrote back. Hey, that's great. I hadn't thought of that. That is if the best way to, to get the foam on the wall is to put it on a piece of cardboard. So like if, you know, someone's thrown out a refrigerator box in the alley, I grab it because there you got some nice thick cardboard and you you can you can put it on on a piece of cardboard, mm -hmm. glue it on there, and then get some, you know, a drop cloth from Ace Hardware or from wherever or Home <laughs> Depot. Yeah. And, and cut it up and then staple it like you're upholstering a, a, a couch, mm -hmm. if you've ever done that. And then you suddenly have something that that's something you can <sighs> easily hang easily hang it and as you can hear this app it just it works great and then you can you know hang it like a picture you can put command strips on there you can you know you know lean it up against the wall which mm -hmm. i've seen plenty of times but this works desk. yeah but this works great and you can you can you know i could paint a mustache on there if i want <laughs> that's right you know or you know i i think what there was was it orlex that actually had uh they were making them out of coffee bags. I think uh, so, or ATS. It, one of those. It was a ATS, yeah, because yeah. I remember I, I did some voice work for them, and they were like, you know, where did these panels come from? You know, so you can do anything with these, and then you're not stuck with, you know, gray, you know, pyramids or yeah, wedges exactly. or something like that. Yeah. I and, was going to say, to, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I did a cardboard thing. I had a client who had bought a big box of one foot square, you know, uh, Arlex panels. Where do we get the cardboard? The box. <laughs> of course. <laughs> the box that came in. I <laughs> immediately it's, it's, chopped it into. This big, huge box that comes yeah, in. Yeah, I chopped it into sections. The box is already naturally the right dimensions because it's holding one foot square of foam. So it was super easy. I just cut it into, into the right sizes. And uh, that's the beauty of it. Is you get a rigid back and you get to use the spray glue outside where it, it dries and cures outside. You never have to spray inside, you know? So yeah. that stuff is pretty nasty. Yeah. Hot glue gun works too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and but, of course, when, once you wrap it with this stuff, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So. Precisely. You know, also there's, there's another little hack. There's another way to use the, the command strips with, with spray glue. So I found that with Velcro or command strips, if you do spray a little spot of the spray glue on the panel and then attach the command strip or Velcro to that, that does stick really well. So that's a little, that's a little trick. If you just want to have like two command strip Velcros hanging the panel up, they will stay on with a little spray glue 
anyway. Yeah. So, but there, there are many ways to hang these panels. Um, you know, acoustical blankets make it a lot easier. Somebody, somebody said they took a, an old curtain and pinned them all to the old curtain and then hung them on a curtain. <laughs> I, I, I mean, there were some great hacks in there. Some I thought those were pretty stuff. good. See, if I was doing it, I would have the curtain. Well, if it's a nice curtain, I'd have the curtain in the front and the foam in the back. Right. You know, just well, to there. cover the phone. So there's a lot of ways you can layer this stuff and be creative with it. So, yeah. All right. So, cool. yeah. Good one. So if you guys got some questions, George and I have the answers. So if you're on, on Clubhouse, if you're on Facebook, if you're in YouTube, type it in the chat rooms there. They come right up. This is a great thing about this program. I get to see all the questions coming up no matter where they are. How do we do that? It's, <laughs> it's magic. Magic. Yeah. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with your questions and the answers right after this. Hi, this is Bill Farmer and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. We've been sequestered for over a year, forced to watch undubbed Turkish soap operas. And face it, we're all zoomed out. But now it's time to get back on the road again. And if you have to record your voiceover tracks on the road, there's no better way than to use a Harlan Hogan Portabooth Plus. With one zipper assembly in seconds and lined in Orlex Studio Foam, the Portabooth Plus is your answer to professional recordings on the road. And because summer travel and remote recording are finally back, here's VoiceOver Essentials gift to you. Buy a Portabooth Plus and the first 50 buyers will get their fabulous Portabooth Plus travel bag absolutely free. There is, however, a limit of four booths with the free travel bag per customer. So go on over to voiceoveressentials.com and just click on the Portabooth Plus carry-on travel bag buy now button. No promo code needed. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. Well, it's the time of the show where I talk about source elements and source connect. This is the industry standard, uh, really has taken the, um, taken the torch from ISDN and carried it now as a way to connect your studio to other studios around the world. It's been around quite a long time. There's a lot of other comp competitors and there's been way more that have certainly come up in the last couple of years, especially during the pandemic. The thing is, the problem is that most of them are facing being new to the scene and not around that long is they don't have a lot of support, not just from the studios uh, picking up using them, but they don't have a lot of support on the technical side either. And that's where Source Elements, I think, really shines. They've made that investment in improving their on-demand and scheduled support so you can get that support and get your session going. Um, that's a big, big deal. And uh, I really feel that's one way they really did, you know, separate themselves from the rest. If you're a subscriber uh, and you subscribe to using Source Connect, you'll always have their support. It's part of having a subscription. You can buy it as well, and if you don't like subscriptions, and you'll get support for 90 days, and then you have the option to uh, then purchase a support plan after. They try to work with you however you like to buy or use their software, which I think is great. If you want to get a demo, head over to source-elements.com slash, uh, well, actually, I don't know what the slash is. Just look for the demo and get the 15-day trial. Um, and they've got instructions on there on how to get it set up and running. They've got a link to a video I've created on how to do so. 
and it'll help you get rocking and rolling and, and learning uh, why Source Connect is probably a tool you need to play at the next level uh, because it's what the big studios use. Anyway, thanks for listening. Let's get to those questions right after this. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. Hey, well, we're back. By the way, you know, I, I failed to mention at the top of the show that George and I do this for a living. Perhaps you, oh, yeah. you know, perhaps I didn't put plug a palooza <laughs> in the, in the show notes this week, but got to do that because by the way, that's what this show is all about. So, you know, that George and I are the experts when it comes to home voice over studios. Talk about a niche. This is, this is our niche. This is, this is what we do. We do it more than anybody else on the face of this little blue globe that's spinning around the sun. I'm telling you, everybody else is an expert in one studio, their own. Uh, you know, there's a lot of other guys out there that are well qualified and they're audio engineers and stuff like that. The fact of the matter is, is every voice is different. Every room is different. As we were just talking about a little while ago when it caught talking about diffusion inside your booth. This is the stuff that we know. We know what it's supposed to sound like. We know what it takes to get it to sound that way. So uh, if you need help with your home studio, if you don't really understand it, if you got a technical issue, if something's not working, and I'm sure we'll get a couple of questions about that, all you got to do is contact one of us. So if you want to talk to George, what do you do? You go over to? George the dot tech. <laughs> I still can't figure out which way to point to that thing. Uh, George the dot tech is my website. If that makes your brain fry, it's George the tech dot com. Yes, that also works. Um, new website coming soon from voice actor websites dot com. I'm excited about that. Um, but you can uh, book services with me online. You can send me a sound check sample. I can make you an effects rack for auditions, whatever it is. Uh, design a studio, a lot of services that are available to you. So check that out. And Dan does a lot of the same stuff, including taking specimens. Is that I right? I do. Dan? Yeah. If you go to my homepage, which is homevoiceoverstudio.com, uh, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you will come across my specimen collection cup. And that is a Dropbox. Click on that. Follow the instructions thoroughly. I want to hear the raw sound of your studio, not like all the processing you're doing, which is probably wrong. Uh, and um, I can give you a very thorough analysis based on my formula of what it's supposed to sound like and what you can do to get it sounding better or <laughs> what's wrong with it and be amazed at some of the things that I hear. And uh, George is just as amazed as some of the things he hears. <laughs> yeah. So uh, go on over to our websites and check us out and, uh, and hire us to do what you don't know how to do. Yeah, that, that's a slogan that doesn't work very well, but you know what I meant. <laughs> Save yourself a lot of time. And it is the ultimate shortcut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really is. Yeah. It, it, it amazes me, you know, I mean, Hours and hours of mind-numbing frustration if you really don't know what you're doing. Just contact the guys and, that know what Especially this, know if you get stuff. support through committee. Absolutely. Yeah. Avoid Do not <laughs> crowdsource your Please. home voiceover studio. Save, it saves a lot of time. Yeah. We got lots of great questions here. So why don't we fire those off? All right. Jordan? Should I start then? I go, you we'll shall. Start at, we'll start at the very beginning because it's a very good place to start. Douglas Voice Guy. That's a good name. Um, his question came in earlier and it's about Fruity Loops. Yes. Fruity Delicious. Loops, for those that don't know, is really a recording <laughs> software. Um, it has a what's called a, a heat map on its parametric equalizer, which seems to be an enhanced form of a spectrogram. It looks extremely helpful for voice actors to understand frequencies in their voices or spaces, um, or if their spaces are especially wrong, strong. Uh, I'm not reading that right. It looks oh, if their voices for... are especially strong. Gotcha. Okay. Voices or spaces are especially strong. Got it. Um, any common voiceover DAWs, you know, DAWs for voiceover um, that have anything similar? Um, well, well I, mean, I have to think of audition because it has a spectrogram. Very good one. Yeah. Um, when you're paying 20 bucks a month, that's what you're paying for is that spectrogram in, in audition. 
Uh, you know, the, the fact of the matter is, is the spectrogram is a very, very powerful tool. Now, they may be calling it a heat map, heat map. you yeah, know, and, and it to has Google to, uh, I, I, I think it has probably more to do with, as he was saying, the loudness of your voice. What a spectrogram will show you is the relative volume of individual frequencies of your voice to show you where your voice is stronger. Usually it's like, you know, between 100 hertz and say about, you know, 1K. Uh, where the majority of your voice is and some of the upper level stuff is, you know, a little higher than that, but it shows you things that you can't see on the waveform. So George is now pulling that up. Let's take a look at what this heat map is. I'm trying to find an example of it here. Yeah. But you know, the fact of the matter is map looks like it's there somewhere. So it's showing you a spectrogram type display underneath the eq so as mm -hmm. you're see i i tune eq by ear it's old school it's what too. engineers do you listen you tweak a lot of people don't have that experience yet and so for them a visual representation of the eq might be better so if that's what's going on there it's it's rather unique i don't know of a of a simple vo daw or editor that has that exact exact same feature yeah. um so very interesting yeah so Let's see. Let's see if something else yeah, if comes anybody up. Anybody knows? Leave a comment down below if you know of anything similar in any other doll that's certainly more voiceover friendly. You yeah. could use Fruity Loops. It's just there's so few of us that know it and and know how to make it work that it's just hard to get support when you need it. Yeah. We got anything on Clubhouse? Um, yeah, actually, guess who it is? Our friend Pillar. Pillar. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Pilar. Hello. Hi, George. Hi, Dan. Um, so a voiceover friend of mine lent me their TLM-103 for a few days. Mm -hmm. And uh, I keep getting requests for a big condenser mic, and I have a 416. Mm -hmm. So my experience with the TLM the last time was not very good because I was in a studio. I was doing an audio book, and I was, it was a big space. And... The person who was recording me had more experience with music, yada, yada. So yeah. I just, I'd love to have some tips on how to deal with a TLM-103 so you don't go crazy with all the extra uh, ambient stuff that's going to crop up. What do you mean, but like ambient to, stuff like background noise? Well, not background noise, but like it's just so delicate. That microphone is so delicate. So placement... Um, is it, is it, it's not, it's obviously not like the Sennheiser that, that you put up above you. Where do you put it? How, you know, just like little things like that. Yeah. Actually, it's not all that much different. Uh, I mean, there's the way that, you know, the, you can see how George has his, uh, his, his, uh, audio technica there, or that's, that's the road. It's the road. Yeah. Road. Yeah. NTG five. Yep. The NTG five. Uh, you, you, the idea is to have the diaphragm in the same place. Um, and, and about the same distance, it's just, it's a different type of microphone. You have it like that, have it at eye level and talk underneath it mm -hmm. the way, the way we always show you how to use a studio condenser mic. That's not going to change, you know, how much it's going to pick up because the noise that's there is the, is the noise that's there. And something like a TLM 103 is going to capture everything, you know, your refrigerator, you know, lawnmower two houses down, you know, those sorts of things. Uh, so it really isn't any different from any other microphone. It, you know, and it's some people say it's brighter. Some people say it's warmer. Everybody <laughs> hears differently. Yeah. And so to, to make it make it's it's very objective as to, you know, what, you know, what difference that mic is going to make. So yeah, it's a pretty honest mic. And the one Dan's using is the Harlan VO Harlan hook and VO one a, which is very similar to the TLM 103 EQ wise yep. and sound wise. And um, they're very honest with a little bit of brightness to them. So they're not really dull and flat. They have a little bit of brightness to them. Um, and beyond that, you know, yeah, I, I still like the above hanging down bat, the bat position. Bat -like. That's yeah. what, that was my next question. I okay, still like, like that. <laughs> it's still more practical. It's it, just as you can see uh, for those that are on Ch Clubhouse, um, check the check the feed later and, and see how Dan and I have our mics. But um, the, the bat position hanging down. So it's just above eye line four to six inches. If you have a really good studio, eight inches away, maybe, 
um, is a good place to start. Um, but take really good care of those large diaphragm mics. They, um, any of those mics can't handle humidity, very, very high humidity. They can't handle getting too moist. Um, they can actually sound funky. Um, so, and they're certainly more fragile. So just be yeah. more careful in, in using them and handling them. Yep. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks, Cheers. Danny. Uh, Bob Leadham asks, would you care to mention a good cough mute switch for VO? What, are you sure. doing it live? Uh, you know, yes. <laughs> I mean, well, if you're yeah, on George has one. And you don't want to be embarrassed by uh, yeah, something. Well, I have one over here. I'm going to see if I can, I'm going to see if I can get to it without taking my headphones off. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've got a button on here on, on the board where if I want to cough, off and then, it, you know, it, pretty simple uh, the roadcaster same. has that which is really <laughs> kind of nice but for for more a more simple setup like say you have a scarlet or even an apollo actually anything where you don't have a dedicated proper mute button this is my favorite one um have you seen this one before dan nope <laughs> so this is made by whirlwind um i like it because it's just a simple on off mic is on Mic is off. <laughs> it's very simplistic. Um, it has a blue light that comes on when it's on because it does pass through phantom power. And that's another thing I like about this is it works well with phantom power mics. I've found that some mute buttons either make a pop or they don't really truly mute the mic. They like turn it down almost all the way, which is still audible. <laughs> I found out from... <laughs> clients who had put in a mute button for them and then they'd say uh george they can hear me like, <laughs> oops oops <laughs> you know and they're like, <laughs> that to somebody off you like one of the family members or the dog or and meanwhile they're like are you are you okay are you okay uh, <laughs> this one really does cut the mic and made in usa it's made of metal it's tough as nails uh the ppd mic mute mic mute one word ppd um, not cheap, about a hundred bucks, but it's built like a tank. Even if you yeah. buy new Scarlet's, you'll keep this thing. All righty. What's the next question we have here from right, Mike Dubord? One. Go for yeah. it. Uh, we have Mike Dubord asking about, uh, <laughs> like a question that starts <laughs> like this. I know I'm probably going to get a lot of crap for this, but I recently bought a MKH416 and today I sent it back. Um, I started in the voiceover biz several years ago after spending 35 years in radio. Okay, so yeah, you started yeah, with 35 yeah, years yeah. in radio, and now, <laughs> yeah, there is my problem. I started with the infamous SM7B, and then I bought a Stellar X2. I seriously could not hear much of a difference between the 416 and the X2. Am I nuts? Am I bipolar <laughs> should i ask my doctor for medical marijuana card i don't get it i had such high hopes for that 416 and it just didn't float my boat what gives here's what gives mike just remember that you don't hire you i i, I you know i get this all the time and i know you get it too george that people are like what's you know it's this is like the old what's the best microphone for voiceover well we usually say the one you got if you're trying to satisfy your own ears, especially if you came out of radio, because that's, that's a whole different delivery. And, you know, and people in radio tend to be a little bit closer to the mic. Uh, the fact of the matter is it's maybe not floating your boat, but if you're doing it to really make you to show how much you love your own voice, then you're listening for the wrong stuff. The idea of your home voiceover studio. How many times have I said this? It's got to be in the simple. The idea of your home voiceover studio is not to make you sound great, especially to yourself. It's to make you sound like you. Yeah. So if it didn't, well, I mean, the fact of the matter is, is you're not, you're, if you're the only judge, how do you know if it wasn't the right mic for you? You know, if you're not sure that's what the specimen collection cup is for, that's what George's, uh, you know, drop off is for, mm -hmm. have somebody that knows what it's supposed to sound like listen to it and it's amazing people say it's got this it's got this i'm hearing this i'm hearing that and i'm listening on a pair of yamaha h5s at the right distance in the right acoustics if it's if there's something there i'm gonna hear it and if something is there 
George is going to hear it. You can, we listen on headphones. We listen on studio monitors. It's usually like, oh, well, you're listening to it on your laptop speakers. That might explain a thing or two. But anyway, your thoughts? Yeah, I, the, he's comparing the 416 to the Stellar X2. I, I don't know the Stellar X2 very, very well. I've heard it a few times, and I've always thought it sounded pretty good for the cost. Um, you know, the fact of the matter is a lot of microphones in the voiceover world, I think, are EQ'd to be a lot like a 416. Um, because the 416, the sound of that mic is so pervasive in the genre of voiceover that the way a voice sounds through a 416 is now so familiar that if the mic doesn't sound a little bit like a 416, it sounds off. Does that make sense? It sounds In other words, different. It sounds different, right? Yeah. It, it might be accurate. It might be more accurate. It might be flatter, like more, more, you know, not as, not as much treble. There could be a lot of things, but we, you know, back in the, when did we go from ribbon to condenser mics in the sixties or fifties? Uh, I, I think condenser mics came around in, you know, in the, in the late forties, you know, but they, you know, they, you, you know, they, they, it was a slow transition. Right. So there was, there was a time where the sound we were all accustomed to of the human voice was through a ribbon mic. Uh, this very, 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 very warm sound. That was the, what everybody was accustomed to. And if you were on a mic that was thin and bright, everybody would think something's wrong. So there's a certain sound that we've become accustomed to, and I really do relate it to the 416 because it's been used so pervasively in the voiceover world, and especially in Hollywood since the early 80s, late 70s. So other mics like a Stellar X2 are going to sound probably kind of similar. And the subtle differences between that and a 416 might be lost on you. Um, they may sound very similar to you. Um, the way you work those mics is different. The way they're going inter to inter interact with your room is different. And in your case, it might have just been simply a waste of money, which I, if you didn't hear the difference and you're still booking and you're still getting a good sound, if it sounds good. It is good. It is good. You don't need to buy the industry standard. Or whatever that is. What, what, um, it, yeah, what industry are they talking about when they say that? Too? Right. So, yeah. J. Horace Black. Can. Yeah, he sort of, we talked about it. If, if you have plugins running with the UA uh, Apollo, will the plugin work on the M1 Mac Mini? And your answer was? Oh, in this case, yes. In this case, yes. Because the plugins, well, <laughs> it's interesting. The plugins don't actually run on the mac they're running inside the apollo so right. you don't have to worry about this incompatibility problem so if you if you just plug an apollo into an m1 yes you're going to get some error message that you have to do this update and you got to hold down this hot key and restart the computer you you got to hack the computer because right now they don't have native silicon mac m1 support but once you go through those steps and they do outline it on their website um, it will work. I've tested it. I have got it working in a few studios and all the plugins do work. So that's, that's kind of cool. Like if you're dependent on those plugins working on a new Mac, you don't now, you don't have to worry about that compatibility problem at all. It's actually a good question. I hadn't talked about that, but it's true. Yeah. Uh, we got anything on clubhouse? Not on clubhouse. No. Um, but I just found another one from Facebook actually from someone whose name I haven't seen yet. And that is from a lady named Srabani Bacharaya. I'm going to okay. butcher that name. I'm so sorry. I think she might be in India or something. Sorry about that. Um, she asks, is a pop filter essential for recording? Hey, that's a question we haven't talked about in a while. No. But Are we using you, pop screens right now? I don't see George using one, and I don't. you don't see Dan using one. That's Why? Right. Because we, now, now can, I, can I use the bat hang, the hanging bat uh, thing here? Yeah, if you... The, the, the thing is, you know, the pop screens, you know, I think for me, I just believe it's something that prevents, you know, Celine Dion from singing, you know, spitting on a $10,000 Neumann microphone or, right. or a Geffel or something like that. You'll see them in, in recording studios where you'll have vocalists. Vocalists have a tendency to really work the mics because the engineer can really pull back the gain on it and... That's what they're, they're protecting these mics. Does it prevent uh, plosives? Well, it can, 
But if you use the mic right in the method that we always show you, which is hanging upside down, have the diaphragm about the bridge of your nose, your copy underneath, you can go, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers all day long, and you're not going to get plosives. The pictures you see of when you type in, I want to see pictures of someone doing voiceover, you get someone with headphones talking into the mic like that. Those are not pictures of voice actors. Those are pictures of singers. So again, that crossover between you know recording music and recording voiceover, you don't really need to have a pop scream. According to me. I have to or agree. Hey. I have to agree. Yeah. Okay. It's definitely, I like that you agree. A, it's definitely a mic placement thing. Um, there are occasions where it's helpful. Some mics are so pop sensitive that it can be helpful. Um, but overall, it's just not that necessary anymore, just with mic, proper mic placement. Should we squeeze oh. in two more quickies? These just we can. popped up all of a sudden. Yeah, there's one um, a, a Zoom question. Where is that? Um, Grace says, I'm a, I'm a regular guest on a podcast that uses Zoom. Ah, yes. Um, I have the Scarlet Solo third generation, which is the current model. After about 10 minutes in the, the audio from, I guess it's from, the mic drops, and I have to disconnect it, and I go with the default computer audio. Any ideas? No, I, I don't have any. I don't know if you're on Windows or Mac, so that kind of helps. Yeah, that's, that's usually a, an, an indicator. But yeah, the, I don't know. I mean, there's Zoom has had some issues with various things, you know, uh, you know, I've noticed, uh, you know, sometimes the the uh, if the data rate changes or something like that, that oh, can throw rate or the sample rate, sample, the rate. sample rate. Yeah, it, it, it's going to screw it, stuff up. that's going to screw things up. Uh, be, you know, there's a difference between forty one hundred and forty eight K. And uh, sometimes it, I love George's term for this Cyloning. <laughs> uh you know it'll it'll do that <laughs> right when it does that, or, yeah. yeah if it drops generally i think that's that's a driver issue so it might be on a pc uh i haven't sounds heard like a windows issue yeah uh, it's, it's not that well, it couldn't happen yeah she just confirmed windows ding i would contact <laughs> ding um, yeah i would contact focus right they're always updating their drivers for windows support issues get the latest driver update from focus right and install it Go to the yep. website, look for driver updates, install it, and restart your system and go from there. And if it's still happening, then definitely contact Focusrite support because that is not, that ain't right. That ain't right. That's right. No. And again, what's the problem? Windows. Yeah, you know? Windows, is that, Windows, Windows and sound drivers is a juggernaut. Yeah. <laughs> it's a real... Yeah, you know, they're great for running models of of global warming and, you know, population trends, and radio automation the, systems. <laughs> yeah, but not yeah, but not for voiceover, my friends, you know. I mean, yeah, you can run pro tools on it, it it'll work. I I think the, the thing is is that again, your computer is not really so much a computer as it is a cassette recorder and all it really should do is hit play, record, rewind and all that other stuff and forget about all the techno babble that goes on yeah, yeah and all it's that a, kind it's of a utility stuff. you want it to be reliable exactly one last, last one. question from mr black j horace black says i need to replace my old equator studio monitors that are making noise like the sound of your voice uh any models or brands that you suggest that would be good replacement before uh, we do that please i want to say this it's disappointing that company went out of business yeah they were really cool speakers um i what, what can happen? I've had this happen with studio monitors over the years. This is not unusual. The amplifiers are inside the speakers, and there's components in there called capacitors, and they sometimes start going bad. And when they start going bad, the speaker starts getting this buzzy or makes a buzz noise. My Mackie monitors, which are sitting on my desk, they're 20-something years old. I've had to have them fixed. There is really not really much out there that's in a direct replacement for those speakers. They're unusual designs. They are coaxial drivers and for what those things cost there's hardly anything that exists that i think that matches their their quality i have to say not that there isn't things there's ugh, myriad i mean personas irises are great and everything there's tons of them yeah. but i would recommend getting them serviced um i really would i there's a company called audio rehab friends of mine um one of the guys that works in there is scott hamilton 
I love following him on Instagram because he shows pictures of like priceless vintage microphones of some <laughs> rock star he can't name, you know, that he's fixing on his bench. But they fix all kinds of stuff like this. And uh, they might for a reasonable amount, a reasonable, reasonable amount, um, maybe less than replacing them, um, be able to recap them. That's a thing, recapping. And um, get rid of the noise and the buzz and clean them up and have them working the way they did when they were new. I would, I would recommend giving them a shot. Audiorehab.com. Um, yeah. They're here in Hollywood. Um, get a quote and see uh, if it's worth it to you. Um, I would recommend it. Th yeah. there, there's, those amplifiers are pretty simple. They're repairable. Um, and they're, they'll replace them with components that will arguably outlast the factory parts. So right. It may, it may actually be higher, higher uh, quality too. You know, Absolutely. They, yes. Yeah. This is, yeah, that's the great thing about, yeah. That was the great thing about fixing old radios is learning about capacitors and, you know, and if there's a hum in there, it means it's the filter cap, the filter capacitor, which is mm -hmm. something that changes AC to DC. And, mm. and when those go, when those dry out, you start getting buzz and hum. Mm. You replace those. Oh, those are electrolytic capacitors, right? Yes. Yeah. There, there's a fluid inside them that's actually eventually what dries out. It dries out. Yeah. Well, they're yeah. in wax paper and uh, yes, yeah. they're if a you mess. You look inside and you see little things that look like tiny little cylinders, like tiny soda cans. Those are electrolytic capacitors. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Anyway, they can well, be fixed. They it can be. You know, or just go out and buy another pair. You know, I've got my Yamaha H5s, you know, KRKs. There's so many good companies oh that make God, good monitors. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. Recommending monitors is like recommending headphones or microphones. Like it's just, it's such a, a very much a personal choice, honestly. Yeah. All righty. That's all the questions we have for this That's week. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll wrap it up uh, for another two weeks right after this. <laughs> I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did! I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beetle body shop. Getting into VO is quite an accomplishment. And accomplishing anything in the world of performance can be really tough. Getting great information is tough. Getting the right advice and mentoring is tough. Simply getting ahead is tough. And the best way to get ahead is to simply get started. Let's make it simple. To get started in voiceover, the best way is with VO Hero's free online course, Getting Started in VoiceOver. You'll learn everything you need to know to create a successful, satisfying, and profitable voiceover career. The link is really simple. Here it is. VOHeroes.com forward slash start. Again, that's voheroes.com forward slash start. Get ahead in voiceover simply by getting started. Go to voheroes.com forward slash start. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the voiceover body shop. Yeah, and we're back to say goodbye. Um, you know, we're going to be off for a couple of weeks because... Uh, next week is Memorial Day, and we, we have a policy of not doing things on, on federal holidays, which means Memorial Day we're going to be off, and the 4th of July will be off because the Monday is the 5th, which is the day everybody takes off. We're actually going to be gone the entire month of July. Aww. But, we, but what we can have you do is go back, and if there's a, something you wanted to hear, if there was a program you missed or a guest you missed, let me know because we'll replay one of those great interviews that, because cripes with this is, we, we just did episode 206 of, of our interviews. <laughs> and this is episode, this is 50, you know, tech talk number 57. You know, there's a lot of knowledge in there. There's a lot of great stuff. And uh, if there's something you've missed, we'll be happy to put it on. And I think I'll look through and see what were really the best ones we've done. Not that they aren't all fantastic. But we'll, well be maybe sure. absence will make the heart grow fonder. That's true. That's true. But you know, the missus and I are going to Iceland, That's taking so a cruise cool. to 
Iceland. Yeah. Been awesome. wanting to do that my whole life. And now we get, I've always wanted to see an erupting volcano, not some distant mountain that's got some smoke coming out of it. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know, somebody's hey, we're going to Pennsylvania. I'm Twice taking, as exciting. I'm taking my girlfriend <laughs> and my daughter to Pennsylvania. So we get to do family stuff the first week of July. So, all righty. Cool. Uh, who are our donors this week? Well, we have a bunch of familiar names like Robert Leadham, Christy Burns, Graham Spicer, Uncle Roy, Michelle Blanker, Sarah Borges, and Christopher Epperson. All of these folks, I'm pretty sure, are subscribers because read their names every other week or so. Um, that means they're subscribing through our website. You can click uh, Donate Now on the site. You can make a one-time or a recurring donation if you like. Anyhow, Maybe. any way that you like to support, just head over to vobs.tv to do so. And we right. thank you for doing yeah. that. And once again, if you need help with your home studio, if you want to learn it from the ground up or you got a technical issue, you can contact George over at George the dot tech and Dan is reachable over at home voiceover studio.com. Uh, we need to thank our magnificent sponsors who've been with us all these years, like mm -hmm. Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials, voiceover extra source elements, voheroes.com voice actor websites.com and MC demos. demos. Uh, thanks to Danny Burnside over at Clubhouse for uh, tuning in some of his guests over there. Thanks, Danny. Sue Merlino, our fantastic technical director. We're all going to be together soon in the same room it's because I miss making iced coffee for everybody. Uh, <laughs> and, of course, Lee Penny, simply for being Lee Penny. That's going to do it for us this week. Again, got to sound right. But here's the thing. If your audio sounds right, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Have a great week, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.